Okay, now I'm gonna film this in segments and I'll stitch it together because there's several parts to this, but okay, I'm installing again these heat crash bars. This is a DCT model now, Africa Twin. It is the uh, ES Adventure Sport. So there are some slight differences and so forth depending on the model you got. Okay, now, step one, I started out and I took the instructions, they're in Polish and in English. And I've, you know, it's not, it's not perfect English, but first thing I did is there's your parts list in English. And I lined those out. And uh, one of the quickest ways is of course, take your tape measure if you need to and measure for millimeters to make sure you have the right bolt combination. And watch your head size is eight or 10 and so forth. But if you measure them and lay your parts out, that's your starting point. Now, the first thing is over here on the front end of this bike, do not take that top screw out up here. Only take the bottom one out here. It's Honda. And it is, it's inserted, here it is. This is the one that Honda has in there and it'll be turned this direction. So remember, right, tight, light, left, loose. So take that bottom one out. Don't take the top one, take the bottom one. When you've removed the bottom one, then take these two brackets that come to you and you'll insert, that'll be your first step. You'll insert these two bolts here. Now, they tell you in the instructions, be sure and do the correct orientation. So I am looking at the front of the bike. You'll notice that the heads here on this side and there's a washer behind here and the nut, acorn nuts are on this side of the bike. There, you can see them. And they also have a washer and it's important for orientation. So they say. Then I have a spacer in here, and you can see I'm doing the same orientation, the nut on this side. All right, I've taken the skid plate off, and I took more than I needed to. You don't have to take this piece off, I don't believe. You just take your skid plate off, but I've removed this also. All right, come over here and remove all your plastic covering, including your battery box covering. Get those out of the way. Now don't mess this up. Don't strip these screws because you're going to remove this engine bolt here. My suggestion, get your breaker bar and do not skimp on size. Get the exact size, 12 millimeter and break that because you're going to remove this engine bolt. Now we're going to instead insert another. Now when you remove this, there's a wash, I mean, I'm sorry. There's a little, well, you can see, it's a little sleeve in there. You're gonna need to catch that. Now, speaking of that, it's very important. Watch when you take your hardware out. Some of these have inserts. You don't wanna lose them. On your covers, some of them will have inserts. So what I do is I take them together so I don't lose them. Like for example, look at this one. There is an insert on each of these. If you're not careful when you remove that, they're gonna fall out and you're gonna lose them. So I've inserted them and taped them so they'll stay with that when I put them back on. It's just a plastic cover. You got the same thing on one of your shields. There's a little sleeve insert and you don't wanna lose that. So lay it out in orientation so that you don't. You can see here, I've taped this because there is an insert in there. And I don't wanna lose it now. While I have them out, I put anti-seize on just about all my bolts and hardware before I put them back in. Because I've been there, done that. So that's my recommendation. So at this point, I'm getting ready now to remove this engine bolt and uh, proceed. So I'll pick up in the next video. So at this point, I basically have just removed some parts and done very limited hardware. 
All right, next video coming up. Okay, here we are in my series of installing these heat crash bars. And I wanna give you some pointers that I could not find anywhere. And it's difficult uh, sometimes to follow along. So, all right. When you go to install that left, what they call the lefty, on the left side, I'm on the left side of the bike. By the way, the left side to me is like in riding position, so don't get that confused. Just remember that the notches and all are meant to go inside. They're notched to fit, that's how you'll know. And the wider part sticks out. And the left side has a more cut to it and it's a thinner bracket, you know. And they're not always clear. And well, they're not clear at all about that. They don't, they don't really know. Uh, you just take a chance. You hope you get it right because if you don't, you've already removed that engine bolt. So over here on the right side, here's that little right bracket. And I use the square part on the outside. Now, another thing that's important to remember is that you're taking that engine bolt out and you're putting it back in. Use some blue thread locker, I did. But now you've got a washer on the outside. I mean, it's underneath here, but it's on the outside of this engine bolt. You know, and again, I'm on the right side of the bike. Now, on the left side here, when you put that bracket in, you got to remember that there is a sleeve that goes in first and then your bracket. So you got to finagle and line that up to get that in back behind this bracket. Because essentially what you're doing is you're pushing this bar out. So that filler sleeve piece that you put in, which is, they give you two of them, 9.5 millimeters. On this side, on the left side, it'll go first and then your bracket will go. So that's why you can't see that sleeve now. And then your engine bolt goes back in. And that's important to remember because there is differences. On the right side, that sleeve is on this side of the bracket, on this side of the bracket. I'll say again, on this side of the bracket, not on the inside, so they're different. Okay? And these brackets go back, slide under they don't slide on top, they slide under on both sides. They go underneath. Now, you have to replace this and put this plate in here. So you'll have to take your foot piece OEM out because you're gonna replace this hardware. They're gonna give you a bolt for this and they're gonna give you a bolt for this. So you're just inserting this bracket and look at the direction and orientation of this thing of how it's installed so you remember. Now you can see I've removed my plastic covers here, but they're gonna go back in, but that's so that I could then come back and mount this upper part of this bracket here. Now the hardest part of this to me was in, in this section, where you gotta get in here, and it is such a tight spot for me and my big hands. Uh, but you're essentially replacing this, a new bolt here, a new bolt here, two 120s. The difference being the bottom one is an eight, the top one's a 10. And notice the spacers too. See the spacer inserted here? Now that's the spacers inserted. Well, you actually use the back top right one, it's reused. You know, so you have to remember that on the spacer. So let me get over here. You can see each one of these have spacers now inset on this side of the bracket. 
Now these are, uh, that's not tightened down yet. I'm getting ready to tighten all this down. I'm just showing you before I tighten it all down. And notice that you're using the bottom and the back. You don't touch this center one, top. It's a, it stays factory OEM. But you gotta get back here and use these two. And it is a tight spot uh, to get back here. Now I did, in fact, I'll tell you what, removing this top one uh, actually broke my breaker bar. Now, you know, a breaker bar has a, a slug in it that's with a Phillips screwdriver, so I was able to put it back together, but that's how much pressure was on that. And do not make the mistake and use wrong size. These are all metric sizes on Honda. Use the proper metric wrench and just be safe and use a, use a basically a breaker bar. Don't take a chance of stripping your screws. I had no problem other than that one and then I just reassemble my breaker bar. But as long as you use a breaker bar, you're gonna be good to go. Now notice how all of these have an insert at the top. There's an insert here in each spot and it's bolted in together here at the front end. So all that's left to do is for me to tighten this down. Now, I did go step by step, taking my time uh, reading the English instructions, Polish version. Uh, but they do tell you which nuts and bolts to use. You just have to get your tape measure out and double check. Now, a couple of them were the same size, but it became obvious which one was to be used where. For example, these two down here are the same size as the two here. Well, you knew those had to be threaded in because you was going to need the nut up top to bolt your bar. And I think those were the only two sets that were the same size. So I've got it installed. All I'm going to do now is tighten this down. Now, I know people says this takes two hours or whatever, but it's taken me quite a long time. But again, I have gone very methodically, very carefully in looking and making sure and testing and checking and so forth because you don't want to have to take these off and redo them. You want to get it right the first time. And you will. The biggest problem you have to remember is how to line these brackets up. Make sure you get the proper left one, the proper right one, and put those sleeves in properly. And by sleeves, I mean these pillars like look like this. You can see, you might say, well, why are these on the floor? Because you replace some of your OEM with ones they provide you. And that's because they're, in some cases, they're shimming theirs down. In some cases, they're expanding them out. So just be careful to walk step by step through the process, you know. Now, I've still got my skid plate off. It will line up perfectly. I'm going to change the oil and all on this bike, too, while I'm here, but... Let me get back and show you a picture now. I did order the black and I did order the uh, ESDCT model. And uh, hey, it worked, so I must have got the order right. I'm not sure how much difference there is in the DCT versus the manual, other than in the manual. I believe when you're installing here uh, or on the left side there, you just have to basically remove your, your shifter. Uh, so otherwise, you can see the mounting points now with this new bracket. It helps you to mount here at the bottom. With this bracket here, it helps you mount to the right side. With these brackets up here, you were able to mount the front end. And by replacing the 120s in here, you're able to mount there. So it has several mounting locations. As far as the uh, quality, I mean, they look, look good. They certainly are packaged very well. Even though my box got beat up, they take noodle wrap on all of this. And to keep from scratching your bars, as I mentioned earlier, just take you a little scissors and clip the tape. Don't try to get under there. You'll scratch your bars all up if you do that. Now I've got some of this uh, thread stuff on here because every bolt I put in, and I recommend it to you too, Go ahead and get in the habit of using this anti-seize 
So when you're putting that new hardware in there, put you some anti-seize on there. You don't know when you might have to take these off for some reason. And you don't want to get stripped out bolts and stuff to have to deal with it. So just slather your little bit of that anti-seize on there. Otherwise, guys, this is another project coming to an end. I'm going to tighten this up, and then I'm going to change the oil, clean the chain, clean the bike, and so forth. Put my plastic covers back on. Uh, but I'm satisfied. I got these uh, delivered from Poland. I ordered them September the 9th, I believe. And they came in yesterday, the 22nd, I think it was. And uh, total cost delivered, I believe was right at 380. Uh, a bulk of that, $65, I believe of that was shipping. So they've gone up a little bit, but still they're, uh, I mean, comparatively priced. I mean, they're, they're the best price on the market. And really, I think, I mean, they look solid. I think they'll do a good job. So hopefully this is helpful. And uh, so good luck and have fun on your installation.